You're listening to This Week in Real Estate with your host, Rob Golfi. Brought to you by the Golfi team at Remax Escarpment, featuring Conrad Zarini, broker owner of Remax Escarpment Realty Inc., and Brian Hogman, owner of Mission 35 Mortgages. Let's hear what's going on in real estate this week. Good morning. What's happening, guys? Thanks for coming on. It's a beautiful, beautiful week we've had with weather this week. It's uh, it's amazing. Crazy, crazy. So what's uh, anything, uh, any uh, uh, news or anything that's, uh, because Conrad, I know you read every single newspaper that is uh, in North America. (laughs) (laughs) Anything anything that stands out that uh, you think that might, uh, you know, be something? You know, the, the, the frustration of, uh, you know, uh, these first time buyers and um, that whole thing. And, uh, you know, that dream of owning downtown Toronto, single detached kind of going away. But on the plus side, people are saying, as long as I got great uh, uh, Internet connection and I'm solid there, I, I can move anywhere. So really, um, it's kind of a bittersweet, let's say, so to speak. Right. I think I think what's in the news again, the heat replicated the market because. The week before with the long weekend, wow, I was kind of concerned. You know, we weren't seeing the appointments. And then then the week after, wow, it just exploded again. And uh, we were down like 18% the week before. And then our appointments shot up uh, 11%. Uh, last year at this time, the same one day high, the same day, the the, the day after the long weekend, the, the, the Friday after the long weekend, we had the, 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 the a record-breaking amount of appointments just like we did in 2020. So same, almost like, like three or four off, right? That was it. I noticed, I noticed last week, there's even a bump in the Tuesday and Wednesday appointments yep. made. So is that, is that just due to, because of uh, uh, the weekends people are going away and now they're booking during the week uh, to, to view homes instead of, because uh, usually Thursday and Fridays are the big days for, for appointments booked. Yeah, you know, but you know you're absolutely, it's getting more spread, uh, definitely. And then, you know, if, if people are going to, you know, again, I'm not saying people are holding offers as much as they used to, but I, I would definitely say the Wednesday um, would be the day to hold off offers right now if you're going to do something, right? Awesome. You know, you could make awesome. sure you get over that hump of the weekend, right? That Monday, wow. Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Cool, definitely. cool. So what I wanted to bring up is uh, condos, self-managed versus a uh, property management company. Now, you... D- d- any of you guys live in a condo? I did, and and I experienced it both ways on the same condo. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. so what? So so let me predict this. It was self managed when you started, when you moved in, and then it, it, everybody got fed up of it, and then they went to a property management. Am I correct? No, no, it's funny. It was the other way around. It oh, was, no kidding. It was it was managed by a property management company. So it was a new complex, and and we they turned it over. They the, the builder turned it over to a company. We kind of muddled around for a year with, with the with the management company. And then after, everybody said, well, look, come on, we can do this better. So then for about, I don't know, like then we did that for about 18 months. And then we did self-management for about two years. And then the person that did everything sold. And we were like, uh, left, let's left go back to management again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they say, oh, yeah, so you're coming back now, eh? And hey, things are going to be a little different now. But you know what? It, um I, I get it. You're right. If if the guy that's managing it, it's usually a, a, a retired person that has the yeah. time and, and wants to do it. It's either either a, a, a retired uh, chartered accountant or whatever. Yeah. And uh, but um, the the thing is, like that guy must have worked his ass off doing this. Like you, you have to have financials all the time, mm-hmm. uh, everything. So so actually self managed is good you do save money am i correct were, were the condo fees a lot lower when when it was self yeah you know what too the other thing i find and there's another complex uh, that's very close to where I, I used to live and um so it's three blocks of townhouses one is self managed the other two are managed i you get more done I, I like maybe the condo fees are similar like it's marginally the difference but you get, you get more done on self managed you get more done on self managed yeah like they're they're yeah. they're they're on it with the retaining walls and their their landscaping is impeccable like it's you can just see um yeah that the that one is they're they're using their money wisely and they're, they're the savings from the the management company they're putting it right back into the into the uh, into the ground so yeah, it, it is interesting to see if you panned it. It's on Fairwood Place. 
you'll notice yeah. it. it's just yeah. subtle. The one yeah. set of block is just, it, 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 it sparkles, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I know I couldn't be part of any board or anything uh uh like i even even if it's pro managed by a property management company i still couldn't even be part yeah. of a board i just like you have to like i don't know you have meetings once a month or twice a month i don't know i just i just i couldn't be part of that and but brian this is a question yeah is, is it hard to get financing on self-managed properties yeah, it's a great question. It's actually uh, the CMHC, like the mortgage insurance companies, they don't discriminate between self-managed or property management companies, right? What the biggest thing that they look for is like uh, the reserve fund, lawsuits, that kind of thing. So typically, a lot of times the financing company, the bank, the credit, they're not even looking at the, the, the condo strip. They're leaving it up to the lawyer to review to make sure there's no issues or nuances in there. But once in a while, we do see ones that get flagged. I'm sure you guys have seen ones where it's like they they will not finance this building. And um, it hasn't, you know, I'd be curious to see whether it was a self-manager or not. But it's typically because so many uh, potential sales have tried to go through there that the mortgage insurance company like the, the Canada Guarantee, the Sage Inn, that was old Gemworth and CMHC have uh, flagged it and said, listen, this has been mismanaged. We're not financing it uh, unless you got 20% down, then maybe you can go to a bank and get it done another way. Well, mm -hmm. Conrad and, 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 and also Brian, you guys, Nicholas Drive, it's had a, oh, bad, yeah. oh my God. It's had a bad rap for like how many years. <laughs> I think ever since you I read got my it, mind. You read when my did, mind. That, did that property management company go bankrupt years ago? Like it's not, it's not the same property management company that's managing it now, but that building, like, Condos, you can buy them for like, well, it was like a year ago, it was two hundred and fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. Now they're they're what uh, three fifty now. Uh, like Brian, like 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 banks, uh, those are hard to finance. Uh, ones that have a bad rap from from like property management companies from twenty years ago or fifteen yeah. years ago. Yeah, it's true. Well, and I think I think that Nicholas Drive uh, had a special assessment on it too. If I if I'm correct, where they had I, I forget what it was, might have been balconies at fifteen twenty thousand yeah. dollars mm -hmm. assessment. But what ends up happening is it's a lot. So the mortgage insurance companies have way more information than the banks. And what I mean by it, because everything rolls up to them. So they actually have a whole lot more data to access on properties. Whereas, you know, the Scotia, RBC, TD, anybody else, if you're not insured, if you're not like if you're putting down more than 20 percent, that's kind of how you'll finance those buildings because the banks typically won't know about an issue with those properties because uh, they don't, a lot of times at that 20% range, they don't have as much due diligence as the mortgage insurance company. So if you're trying to finance one of those places as a first time buyer with five or 10% down, Ain't happening. Sorry. Ain't yeah, happening. Yeah. I know. And, and, and we tell we tell people that. Like I I mean, not like especially if new realtors are coming into the place, you know, they got this buyer and they're saying, Hey, there's this condo for sale. It's been sitting there for 60 days. Hey, I think this is perfect for you. And then all of a sudden <laughs> the first time buyer has just got like maybe what ten thousand and he can't and he can't uh can't submit a, an offer on that. Those are so like so why is that building? I know it's had a special assessment, but wasn't that special assessment done years ago? Yeah, I think it's like I think it was years ago. I haven't seen one come up in that building recently, but I would imagine it comes down to the reserve fund because we have seen on that building we've made, you know, for certain buildings where let's say there's a good case to say, hey, property management was poor 10 years ago, but good now, we'll actually take the condo, uh, we'll take all the documents and send it to the insurance company to review because maybe they just haven't done a review in five years and no one's actually done the work to say, hey, your records are out of date now. The reserve fund is better. It's actually a good building now. So that sometimes it's uh, incumbent upon the mortgage broker to re-educate because they're just making decisions based on old information. Right. Yeah. So 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 self-managed is not a big issue in the area as as sometimes what I'm reading about. Sometimes it's actually good if it, like like the building you were in, Conrad. Oh, I mean, yeah. it was run, it was run really well. It was a good guy, but then he ended up uh, leaving and. And, yeah, uh, and then you just, it's a staffing thing. I think you get these committed group of people yeah. and that's really where it's at. And I think yeah. you got to constantly train people uh, to be around, but uh, I, I think there's another one on the mountain I know of uh, close to Lime Ridge. Um, yeah. It's uh, Lime Ridge West again, self-managed 
uh, again, you can see there's a bit of a sparkle there. I'm not, I'm not yeah, going to yeah. you know, just drive I, in I, and I, there's yeah, you know, no, I, it's I, just a little bit more vibrant, right? I, I get it. And I, doing it. I, I get it. I get it. Like self-managed, it is going to be a lot better. Like, like in night, was it 1998? I remember when I, I just got into the business uh, and they were just implementing uh, the condo act uh, to all the uh, property management companies. Is it, they had to have 10%, they had to keep 10% into a reserve fund all the time. Is that, uh, would, what was the condo act? Like, remember th that came in? Well, 20 well, years. It, was, it had to do a lot with the um, uh, those reserve fund studies. So I, I, they, uh, the wisdom of the, the Ontario government, Canadian government, um, to not see what's happened down in Florida, obviously. So those reserve oh. fund studies were, that's really where it was at. Because they were seeing a lot of condos in, in let's say, like East York, uh, Etobicoke, that they weren't keeping them. You know, the underground parking was an issue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it was getting... It was getting like really risky kind of thing. Like a yeah, deterioration yeah. and people were saying, I don't want to pay this kind of money. So I think that's when all that reserve fund study came in. And you got to remember too, like a roof could have an effective life of 25 years. The reserve funds probably going to bring it down to 20. So really there's a lot of protection for people that buy condos in Ontario specifically. So I, I doubt we'd ever see something like happened in, 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 in Florida at all because yeah. it's, they're erring on extreme caution. Right, extreme caution. Well, the one that the building that fell down in Florida. I mean, mm -hmm. they knew they needed to spend money, but the the board, the the residents, just held off and held yeah. off and held off. They didn't want to have that special assessment, and look what happened. Now, I'm sure there's going to be insurance issues with that one. Uh, oh I, God, yeah, yeah. There, like, there's going to be insurance companies say, "Hey, wait a minute. This should have been taken care of. This should have been looked at. There should have been." Uh, studies on this engineers should have been there and and it wasn't so there, i'm sure there's gonna be a big legal battle going on with that so yeah but uh, i i didn't really i didn't realize like i mean i i know uh my son phil he has a condo and uh and he and he, and he, he go he, he can't believe the the drama that goes through the buildings in these condo condo <laughs> <buildings. Yeah. laughs> and he's like everybody's talking and and all and, and he gets the letters in the in the in the in his mailbox about you know what what why there's a special assessment and everything on that i'm i'm a big i'm not a, i'm not sure if i'm a big fan of living in a condo uh just because like i mean i'm okay with it but i find that the condo fees just keep going up mm, and yeah. up and like faster than it like than a normal in fat more than inflation like yeah what, what is connor what is it like i mean you like you know like well you know i, I think again it's, you know it's t you know again it's like assembling a professional team around you like you know uh and i know it, rob your agents are very very qualified so really at the end of the day i think you have to do the analysis and it's uh when you're when you're selling condos because you know because sometimes that's the only choice what are the kind of amenities they have right Stay yeah on top of that um and i think you know is there a door person you know that 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 really elevates it how many units i think you know if it's uh some people like this little boutique you know 80 units 75 unit building but you know when you're thinking over 75 units versus over 160 units yeah you you could see it getting pricey and i think you have to really stay on top of it like that whole thing with nicholas and i think agents knew to stay away from that and uh and and, and again you you need a pro right to really yeah. analyze it and then what i'd really like to see is though if, if we took some of these self-managed ones compared them to uh like if there's a differential in value like per square foot i'd really curious to know that number uh if, if self-managed and maybe we might start a revolution of self-managed uh, condos <laughs> Just yeah no kidding no kidding <laughs> yeah like i mean i mean the guy that was managing your condo what if he started his own company obviously he was doing a good job and just say hey listen i only want to manage five buildings that's it and uh he's making a, he's making a good living and uh and uh and the, and the condo buildings are getting uh, big reserve funds they're getting uh you know i mean it, it, it's running smoothly without having heavy increases in uh in condo fees so yeah uh, you, look if you get a core group of really great dedicated people you should be fine uh, and and actually you can you can know there there is the they they rank uh the best managed buildings there's there's a ranking system because um my folks live on uh, 399 elizabeth it was ranked for the i don't know probably the last seven eight years number one best managed uh building so again there's like again going back to what brian said there's that data is available to help you know your your clients make a, a better decision and and watch you know that the expectation of 
will will these amenities end up you know biting me in the butt because of the condo fee yeah, and, and, yeah. and so on and so forth right so I, I know I'll tell you 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 know Rob you show units all the time how many people are in those pools I I I don't think I've ever shown a condo in my entire life and I don't I'm not active now but like 20 25 years ago I don't think I saw anybody in a pool ever <laughs> they, they, they show up in the middle of the night they show up in the middle of the night so, <laughs> so one last i know i know you, you go by like nobody you're right nobody's in those pools i don't even know why they build them i guess that's how they sell condos they, no, they rent them out now on swimly yeah they rent them out now so so brian listen i had some guy call me up and he asked me he's 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 come and he's a lawyer in town i'm not sure if you recognize this guy yogesh <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah. what? I, he called me up out of the blue, just yeah. saying, "Hey, I, I, I'm, uh, you know, uh, new and, and like, you know, he's a lawyer." And uh, and I said, "Yeah, come on in." I I, I gave him the the. Uh, yeah, he awesome. called me. And I said, "Come on in," and, and I'll, I'll talk to him. Really nice guy. Yeah, he's cool. great. Have you have you met Yogesh uh, Conrad at all? No, no I haven't. No, that's cool. He's great. He's, uh, he's great. You know what? And I think it just goes to say he is a hungry guy. Yes. And you know, sometimes professionals in our business, yeah. they get a little bit complacent, right? And to see a professional out there hustling, looking for business is it's refreshing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's really cool to see. And then he tells me he's on John Street, and I go, oh, yeah, and then. Uh, <laughs> All of a sudden, he's he goes. Yeah, I I I uh, I, I know uh, 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 Brian uh, from uh, you know from uh, Miss Five Mortgages. I go, what? I goes, yeah, I'm in this building. I go, <laughs> what's a small world? But you know what? I have to give I have to give this guy a lot of credit for calling me mm -hmm. and and uh, you know meeting with me and, and stuff like that. I really like the guy. I really like the guy. Yoga shoes. Uh, Really nice guy. Yoga uh, he'll love it. You made his yeah. day right now, Rob. Yeah. You made yeah. his day. He is <laughs> jumping for How much was this advertising worth? Yes. <laughs> this guy. No, I have to give this guy credit. He's a good guy. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and his, his last name is uh, pronounced Gotham, like as in Gotham, Gotham City. Like I got him. Like yeah, I got, got him. Yeah, yeah. Get him. yeah. So cool <laughs> stuff. Cool stuff. Well, guys, listen, thanks uh, for uh, coming out. And listen, Brian Hodgman from Mission 35 Expert Mortgage Services, Conrad Zarini, Remax Escarpment and Remax Niagara, bro broker owner, and myself here at uh, uh, Rob Golfie here. Anyway, guys, listen, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. Great. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Bye-bye.